Tonight we're going to turn to the book of Revelation, chapter number 3. We're going to read uh, verses 14 through 22. Okay. And, and unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and be with him. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. All right, so tonight we're going to talk about today's church today's church and uh, we'll begin with verse 22 he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit saith unto the church so the first requirement to hear what God is saying is you have to have an ear to hear a lot of people don't know the truth not because they've never heard it but because they don't have an ear to hear uh, so here Jesus is speaking uh, to us concerning, in this instance, what we consider the seventh church. Uh, and, we're, and we are living in the seventh church's dispensation, uh, 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 I'm sorry, it's church age, uh, the Laodicean church. And Jesus has a very poignant uh, uh, message, a very poignant message for us here. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, unto the angel of the church, these things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Uh, God speaks to the angel of the church and the, the pastor uh, of the church. And God gives the instruction. Now, if you notice in today's church, most often when you're in a church service today, People have to be pumped and primed to have church. We're always up saying, come on, y'all, clap your hands, stop your feet, everybody, come on. What you say? Don't sit down, get into it. And, and there's a lot of pumping, a lot of priming going on in today's worship. And I use that word loosely. Today's worship experiences, you always have to, it's like you have to cajole people to, come on, let's go, come on, come on, come on, get, come on, y'all, clap your hands, you're supposed to come to the church and sit like they did, won't sing, won't clap their hands, they come to church and fall asleep and act like they'd rather be some, anywhere in the world other than in God's house. Well, that is a lukewarm spirit, but Jesus assures us here in Revelation chapter Three, that he knows our works. He sees what we are doing. So then, verse 16, so then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. And so we're witnessing, if we're paying attention, we're witnessing the perpetual spewing of 
the people out of the mouth of God and uh, people are confusing uh, their their knowledge or, or their awareness of God with relationship with him. Amen. Now we live in a day where we are called Christians and uh, we were first called, the saints were first called Christians at Antioch. A Christian is one who is like Christ. Amen. Not one who is Christ-like, but one who is like Christ. Man, we don't, we don't, as a Christian, see, when, you, when you're Christ-like, that means you will flash some resemblance of Christ every now and again. But when you are like Christ, Amen. then your commitment is to living the example that he set forth through his life, through his short uh, 33 and a half years on this earth. And so we are Christians, which means that we are like Christ. So if you are a Christian, then your lifestyle should be like Christ's Amen. as documented in this Bible. So we know there are not very many Christians in the world. And so everyone takes on the label. Today, everybody in the church is a Christian. People don't even go to church. They're Christians. And and, and we, we, we bring Christ a terrible reputation because people do say, go, wear, think, live any old kind of way and call themselves Christians, Amen. but a Christian is someone who is like Christ. Amen. So the Lord says, I know your works. You're neither hot nor cold. Now, again, this is addressed to the church at Laodicea. And the Laodicean church, the Laodicean means people rule or people ruling, ruled by the people. The people are running things, is what it means. And it represents an unbelieving, materialistic, egotistical church. It's a church that is all about itself and not about God and nobody else. Now, Laodicea was famous for its wealth. It was famous for its bankers, its medical school, and it had a popular eye salve in its textile industry. So it was a prosperous city. It was a city that thought it didn't need anything anyone else because it had everything uh, that it thought it needed. Uh, and it, we find today's church uh, that, that resembles, that is the, the exact definition of Laodicean. So in today's church, we have the preacher who preaches what the people want to hear, not what God says to preach. And in today's church, uh, people run from church to church to church because the people are looking for the preacher who's going to do and say what they want and not what God says. And so they're offended when you talk about their sin. When, 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 when I preach and teach against sin, people get offended. People can't sit under a ministry when you talk about sin, when you preach against sin or teach against sin, uh, because they'll say, well, uh, you don't have to be so judgmental. Yeah, people today, when you preach against sin, they say they're saved. They don't want to hear you preach against sin. They want to hear you preach about the cars and the houses. Tell us the good stuff. And so... Most preachers acquiesce to that. They give in. They talk about the good stuff. And so they, they make up messages. And they start telling folks all that God's going to do for them. Uh, and so everybody's going to be blessed. Because if I tell everybody you're going to be blessed all the time, then you're going to love what I'm telling you. Who doesn't want to hear that you're going to be blessed? Who doesn't want to hear that you're wonderful all the time? And the sad part about it is that it's not even true. That's the sad part. So you have folks in church today who are living like dogs, spiritually like dogs. And the preacher will compliment their lifestyle mm -hmm. as if it's godly. That is the church of the Laodiceans. Man, the spirit where the people rule. And so we do things in today's church to keep people in uh, the, the house. And so because you know this now, if you... Keep the people, you're going to get more money. That's right. 
Scripture says, the love of money is in 1 Timothy chapter 6. Amen. The love of money is the root of all evil. And so preachers let down the standard of holiness because they are in love with money. Amen. Now don't mistake money just being a, a, a legal tender uh, the, uh, dollars and, and coins and stuff. No, the love of possessions, the love of material things. The, this materialistic church, the, this age that we're living in, where the church is more interested in the accumulation of material things than it is in the saving of souls. And so Jesus tells again, so that because thou art lukewarm, verse 16, Revelation 3 16, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich. Now, this is today's church. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Now, what Jesus is telling, is doing here is telling us the naked truth. He's simply being upfront with us, being honest. Listen. In order for you to grow in Christ, you have to be preached and taught the truth. Amen. Today's church, our focus is on going to church and occupying some office. People come to church and they're not interested in Christ. They come and are interested in their own ministries. Well, what am I supposed to do? What's my role in the church? Forget about living safe. Forget about being holy. Well, what position can I hold? Can I, I, I have gifts. I have talents. I need to do things. They come to church wanting to do things instead of coming to church and wanting to learn how to live holy. So when you preach and teach holiness, it contradicts their interests. Because they are spiritually cold. Now, when it comes to when it comes to acting in the church, they are hot. But when it comes to living righteously, they are cold. So the end result is lukewarm. And that's why folks are being spewed out of God's mouth because they have left their interests of Christ at the door if they ever had it and they pursue their own ministries their own things I want to do what I want to do so they'll go they'll go shopping for a church we're going to go shopping for a church and if the preacher's not preaching what they want to hear they don't want to hear that preacher see so y'all know it. when you preach against sin folks don't want to hear that message at all Folks want to hear that you're going to get blessings, you're going to get stuff. How can, you, how can I preach blessings to you when you play the lottery? You smoke, you drink, you cuss. You're a whore. You're a sissy, you're a lesbian. And I'm supposed to preach blessings and teach blessings to you? The love of the man of God tells you the truth. The man of God who loves you tells you, listen, you are on your way to the lake of fire. But listen, verse 17 again. Because thou sayest, I am rich. See, I, I, the, the, the church today is too rich. It's too prosperous. We have too many uh, 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 rich folks in church. Nothing wrong with having money. The problem is the love of money is the root of all, all right. evil. And so we have folks who have fallen in love with their money. Now, when you have money, it breeds and creates a sense of arrogance. Because when you have money, you, you are, you're, you're, per, you're perceived to have power. And within yourself, because you have money, you think you've got power. you got it going on. So you can talk to folks however you want. You can do whatever you want. You can, whatever you want to do is what you do. Why? Because it's my money. So the preacher who has big church cars, big house, all that stuff, is, is less interested in hearing from anyone. You can hardly tell anyone anything who has everything, or who has something for that matter. They can't hear. And so, and I, I'm going to have more scriptures to, uh, well, let me, let me go to one right now. Let's go to uh, Proverbs 22 and 16. Proverbs 22 and 16, the Bible says, He that oppresseth the poor to increase his riches, and he that giveth to the rich shall surely come to want. 
And so we have those in the church who oppress the poor. The poor man, a poor person in the church is the least of all. Nobody's studying the poor man in church. In fact, the churches, the church today will tell you the ones who pay the ones who can talk. <laughs> if you pay the money, if you get the most money in the offering, you get the tithes. Guess what? You had the most to say. Forget about being saved. Forget about the Holy Ghost. The deacon, because he gives good money in the church, he's a deacon. Now, a deacon cannot be an unsaved man. The Bible gets the qualifications for a deacon. So how can you be a deacon? You running women. How can you be a deacon when you're smoking and drinking and partying? But because they give good money, because they can fix some stuff in the church, we make them deacons. God's watching. And he's going to, somebody's going to pay for this mess that's going on in the church. These are not deacons that were appointed in today's church. Man, these are the deacons that were appointed in Acts were the men of good report. If you are not a man of good report, how can you be a deacon? Well, the deacon, he sleeps with half the women in the church. Well, then why is he a deacon? And he's not a deacon in God's eyes. But why are we making these people, why are we put, putting them in positions? She's a missionary. She's a whore. How am I going to make her a missionary when she's a whore? How is she an evangelist when she's traveling around the, the city, the state, the county, the country, and screwing everybody that moves? How is she an evangelist? How is he a preacher? He's a bishop. And he's a sissy. Not in God's eyes. He's nothing. You understand? But we're talking about today's church and for I guess for theological reasons we call the Laodicean church but the nature of this church is very well expressed here in Revelation chapter number 3 because thou sayest I am rich and increased with goods see the church has so much now until we don't have church folks will build a big pretty church and have church once a week maybe twice and in a hurry when they go. Why you put all that money into their church and you don't use it? Oh, we have our service times are Sunday at 10 a.m. and then Wednesday. Maybe. And that's it. Because we're building monuments to ourselves. It's not about God. Thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. I don't need nobody. We got plenty of money. It is some. See, too much stuff can make you arrogant. You have to be careful. Because I've seen folks who had nothing and got a little something. They became very arrogant. They changed. You have to be real careful. Don't let, ever let money change you. Man, God, most of us who have money, we shouldn't have it because we, we've let God. I'd rather, be, I'd rather be the poor beggar like Lazarus and make it to heaven than be the rich man and go to hell. But why can't you be a well-to-do man a woman and still make it to heaven. You can. But you only do that if your mind is stayed on Jesus. You increase with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched. This is the scary part. People are wretched and don't even know it. People are practicing sin in God's house and they're practicing sin in the name of Jesus Christ. And guess what? They don't even know it. They don't even know it. You come to church today, you go to church, you've got, they've got the praise dances in the church. they got the women in the church, young girls, they got leotards on. You can see their panties, their, their, their boobies hanging everywhere, and they're shaking their rumps, and, and they're seducing men right there in the church, in Jesus' name. Wretched. Wretched and miserable. Every fad there in the world. We bring it into the church and try to win souls to Christ through Satan's tools. Wretched and miserable. Everything that takes place in the secular world, we try to bring it into the church, talk about the church must be relevant. <laughs> 
if the church you attend is irrelevant, then guess who's not there? Jesus is not there. Jesus is always irrelevant. Yeah. His word is always relevant. So if you're uh, uh, sitting in a church and you're saying, well, they're not, it's not relevant, and they're preaching God's word, the problem is not the church, the problem is you. It's a sad state of affairs today when people don't want to hear about living, holy, clean, sanctified lifestyles. Sad situation. People live any kind of way. And the preacher, the angel of the house, okays all of these ungodly behaviors. If you say you're saved and you smoke, you are not saved. Saved folks don't get high. Saved folks don't pop pills. Saved folks don't snort any drugs. Saved folks don't go to the cupboard and pull out a bottle of, of distilled spirits. Not saved people. Saved people don't cuss. Saved people don't lie. Mm -hmm. But in today's church, in the church of the Laodiceans, the people are in control. So today's church, you have churches where the people choose the pastor. The people hire the pastor. Therein lies the problem. The people hires the pastor. So if y'all hire me, that means you could fire me. So a man who's not hired by God is a hireling. Because he won't say what God says because he's been hired by the people. So that candlestick will be removed. Uh, miserable and poor and blind and naked. Miserable, wretched, mis wretched, miserable, poor, blind, naked. Wretched, miserable, poor, blind, naked. And all of the quote unquote prosperity preaching that takes place in today's church, Jesus has already told us, and for those of us, who want to be obedient to the word of God. It's written here. It's written. I'd, I'd be so afraid. I'd be so afraid uh, of riches. Uh, and, 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 and again, you can have, and if you keep your mind on Jesus, you can have, and you'll bless you, you'll have more. So we don't preach that you, you, we have to be poor to be saved. That's not what we preach. But, Lord, it's easy for a camel to pass to the eye of a needle than for a rich man to make it in the heaven. So... Uh, I'd be afraid to be rich because one thing about being rich is you love your money. Yeah, you love yourself. Uh, but listen to what Paul writes to Timothy uh, in 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter number 6. 1 Timothy 6. Uh, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Now, there is a spirit today in the church, and, and that spirit talks and preaches and teaches and testifies about something called balance. And so the devil, the devil, the devil, has people saying, well, you got to have balance, but they have zero Bible for that. Godliness with contentment is great gain. So we should be fervently pursuing godliness and be content with practicing godliness. That is great gain. Everybody today pursuing fun. Everybody wants to have Fun. Wants to have fun. Yes. But what they really want to do, they want to revel. That's what they want to do. They want to party. See? And the Bible talks about not reveling. The Bible talks about all this jesting and so forth and so on. All the mess that takes place in the church yes. in the name of Jesus. But it is an arrogant church. Don't need anything from nobody. We do what we want to do. All right. 
uh, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. You brought nothing here, you can carry nothing out of here. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Why so many people in church are miserable because they're not content with their food and their raiment, with their clothing. They're not content. You got a roof over your head, you have food to eat, you have clothes to wear. But you're not content with them. Always, people will go and take two, three, four jobs to make more money trying to impress somebody. And talk about God bless me. Oh, let me explain that to you. If you work yourself to death every day and buy something, guess who didn't bless you? You weren't blessed by him. You work like a slave every day. You, you're, you're tired, you're sick, you can't go to church, can't enjoy your family, can't even enjoy life. They're going to come when you ever make it to church and how good God is because you, you, you walked in in your expensive clothes and you drove in your expensive car and struggling to pay all your bills. You're in trouble up to debt in your eyeballs. And, but you think that represents God. That is not the blessing of God. God, when God gives you something, you don't have to pay for it. So if God gives you a car, you don't have to pay for that car. See? See, the man who doesn't believe in God, the atheist, has a car. And some of them have some very nice cars, some very, very beautiful luxury uh, cars, uh, some exotic vehicles that we can't afford. And they're not thinking about God. But when they come through the church doors, we anoint the great people. Oprah Winfrey is a multi-billionaire. And people listen to Oprah Winfrey concerning spiritual godly things when she has no spirit of God. All because she has money. People will listen to the preacher who has glitz and glamour and notoriety and on TV and, and nice cars and the big church. They'll listen to that preacher. He can say, blah, 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 blah. Ooh, he said, blah, 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 blah. And the church will go crazy because the man with the money said, blah, 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 blah. He said nothing. I read quotes on Facebook all the time of, of Jamal Bryant. He's saying absolutely nothing. Pure water. And people are excited because he, there's no wisdom from him. First of all, he didn't even have the Holy Ghost. For starters. So how can you be saved to follow someone who is not saved spiritually? Any man who runs women is not saved. And he certainly is not a preacher and most definitely not a pastor. Huh? If you practice sin, if you practice sin, you are not saved. Save people live a lifestyle of one who is like Christ. Because we are Christians. Our lifestyle can be followed through the life of Christ. Y'all follow me? Amen. And for the raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. Now, here's the problem today's church. Today's church preaches prosperity, prosperity, prosperity. We all should be rich. You have pastors. They're so arrogant it's to insist that we, God made wants all of us to be rich now. So somebody's lying. Either Pastor Paul is lying through the word of God. God told him to write it. Either he's lying or the preachers today are lying. But here's what, here's what the, the great apostle Paul and the apostle, this man, is one who saw Jesus on the road to Damascus, saw, saw him as a bright light. This man was called by God to be an apostle. This man demonstrated the works of an apostle in his lifetime, in his ministry. So he healed the sick. This man raised the dead. This man, this apostle who wrote this word. So now either he's a liar or the preacher today is a liar. But here's what the Bible says. Paul wrote it. God told him right to Timothy. In 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. So my question is this. How can we preach that God wants us to be rich 
when the Bible says, but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. So in other words, what we're doing is we're, 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 God is tempting us is what's happening. If that's the case, then we're being tempted by God because God's making us rich. And rich, they, they will be rich, fall into temptation and a snare. So doesn't that mean that if God blesses you with riches that he's making you, he's tempting you to fall to? Isn't that what the Bible says? So, in other words, we're saying that, that God is tempting us by making us rich. But it's his will that we all be rich. But being rich, they that will be rich fall to temptation and the snare. So either God's lying or some man or men are lying. Amen. Now, if you turn to the book of James chapter number one, verse number 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. So it can't be God doing this because they that will be rich fall into temptation and uh, a snare uh, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. Now, this is the labor of the sea in church, so it's an unpopular message and the people want to hear uh, what tickles their ears and so the Bible says in here in Timothy 2, People have itching ears, and, and preachers love to scratch the itching ears of the people. People, pe preachers love to scratch those ears. But this is a church that is so disgustingly arrogant until this church teaches people to tell God what to do. This church today teaches people to hold God to his promises. This church today teaches people to be very specific with God. You tell God exactly what you want. But you don't know what you want. Because what you really want is probably bad for you. So our, our humility before God is going, whatever you will in my life, let it be. Jesus prayed. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Now we're talking about today's church. How can we sit around, stand around and hear so many doctrines that contradict the written word of God? But they that will be rich fall into temptation and they snared and, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. That's why there are so many miserable people in church. Because most people are poor. So when the preachers keep lying and you telling you God wants you to be rich and you are you are poor, 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 and you keep trying to run game, they tell you to sow a seed to make to try to make some money. You're gonna impress God because you gave some money, because you you did this and you did that, you gave, you gave. Well, they prevent you to try to pay to pay God for blessings. You can't buy a blessing from God. Now, this this church would make Jesus sound foolish. Jesus tells us in Matthew 6 and 33, says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. That's what the Bible says. Today's church has a lot of people on their way to the lake of fire and they're miserable. They're wretched. They're blind. They're naked. They're crazy. In Jesus' name. All because we would rather believe a man than God. Amen. Verse number 10. For, well, let me, let, me, let me do number 9 again. Read, read 9 and 10 together. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil. 
which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. And that's why so many miserable people, that's why you got to get up in the church and tell come on, y'all, sing, clap your hands, stop your feet, do this, because everybody's mind on their money. They got their money, mind on their money, and the money on their mind. It's all about their money, honey. You come to church and the preacher won't preach if you don't give them money. You got the big shop preacher. They won't come preach for you if you don't pay them. They've got to have your money. I won't, I won't fire up my jet <laughs> for less than $100,000. They're going to get paid. Man. And we buy into this. We accept this. See? Because the most pastors are afraid to tell the truth. Because the people might leave. People come and leave all the time. People come at you, of course, and I hate the truth. The devil hates for you to show him himself. The only person who can handle the truth is the one who wants to live righteously. Anyone who does not want to live righteously cannot handle the truth of God in this book, in what we call the Bible. Can't do it. When one comes and does not want to live according to the word, they skadoodle because they can't handle the word of God. Yeah, what was that? You can't handle a few good men around the world. You can't handle the truth. People can't handle the truth. And the truth is not hard. So when, when I hear people say to me, Sir Pastor Ken, he's so hard. You need to be saved. It can't be hard because the way of the transgressor is hard. My yoke is easy. My burdens are mm. I, uh, Isaiah said that word I've hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Blessed are the Lord, teach me that. Uh, I'm sorry, that was David. Isaiah said that word have I hid uh, uh, the mind. That, come on, yeah. Isaiah 23. Thou keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on God. Come on now, because he trust. Thank y'all. Now, this is what the Bible says now. Thou will keep him in perfect peace of mind and say on thee because he trusted in in God, not in his money. Okay? So all of these scriptures that tell us about being holy and, and what God does for you when you make him your priority. And we turn right around. We turn right around and teach the opposite of what the Bible says. Stop, son. And think it's okay. And no one will no one will say anything. We're afraid that if we preach against they won't fool with us. I want them to hate me. I need the devil to hate me. He has to hate me. If the devil loves you, guess who owns you? He does. Mm -hmm. See, I need the devil to not want to fellowship with me. You understand? Yeah. Because we, we know men of God don't run women. We just don't do it. Man of God, you have a wife. You sleep with your wife. You don't, if you sleep with another woman, you're a sinner. If you're sleeping with the women in the church, you're not a man of God. But instead of people wanting to hear the truth and getting right, they'd rather run to somebody who'll tell a lie. So what, they, what happens is that they hook up with each other. Preachers of like mind hook up with each other. See, I got girlfriends, you got girlfriends, so you're not going to talk about me and I'm not going to talk about you. So they're going to hook up. They'll fellowship. Oh, we, we, we fellowship because we live the same lifestyle. But when you're the preacher who holds the line of holiness and, and you disapprove of sin, according to the word of God, the sad part, you're not even talking about them. But because they're guilty, <laughs> the word finds you. So you want to run. Don't run. Get right. Amen. Why are you running away? Right. Oh, it's too hard. Pastor, yeah, you're too hard. So how can you be too hard? All of my righteousnesses are as filthy rags. Amen. How can I be too holy? All of my righteousnesses are as filthy rags. I have to die daily. How can I be too hard? I don't have any gospel. This is God's word, not mine. I'm only saying what he's written. I'm making it up myself. I just, I'm reading what's written in this Bible. God told Paul to write it, and Paul wrote it. So how am I being too hard? What you running from? You better get on those skates. But not because, 
See, you, you've got to make sure that we don't take on the character of this church age. The people cannot be in control of worship. Come to church today, everybody's in a hurry to get out of service, or they won't stay. Well, let them go. They don't want to stay. Let them go. We're not going to rush God's worship because somebody wants a quick, fast, you know, a microwave service. Let them go down the street, go across the street, go up on the corner. It's God's business. You go to work for eight hours, they ask you to work a double, you'll do eight more. And do it with a smile. Come to church in a hurry. This is the church of the Laodiceans. The people run the church. Well, you don't have to have church that often. After all, people are not going to come. You mean we're going to shut the doors because people won't come? If you shut the doors because the people won't come, then someone that wants to come can't come because you shut the doors. Right. Dummy. That's not rocket science. What's wrong with us? Oh, uh, Jesus already told us. Uh -huh. He already told us what's wrong with us if we're paying attention. And so here, here we go back to Revelation chapter number 3. Uh... Because thou sayest, verse number 17, because thou sayest, I am rich and, and increase with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. Gold tried in the fire. Gold tried in the fire is approved by God. And it's not talking about natural gold, y'all. This gold tried in the fire is the word of God. The gold tried in the fire is holiness, obedience to the ways of God. That thou mayest be rich. See, we're rich because we're purchasing gold that's been tried in the fire. And white raiment that thou mayest be clothed. Uh, see, I, I, you know, I liken this to the church today. Too many people have too many secrets. Too many preachers have too many secrets. If you have a secret life, you have something to hide. Hmm? Because the people of God are living epistles. We are the city that sits on a hill that cannot be hid. Yeah. So we want to be seen of men so they can see the Christ in us, the hope of glory. So when my lifestyle is clandestine, when my lifestyle uh, is secretive, when my lifestyle is undercover, then there's something wrong with me as a preacher. I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah. Too many preachers have too many secrets. What's all, all these secret lifestyles? What's going on? Oh, I'm going to tell y'all what it is. It's called sin. Too much sin. When you practice sin, you have something to hide. But the Bible says what's done in the dark is coming to the light. And white raiment that thou mayest be clothed in that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. Don't be so impressed with yourself and with your stuff. Be humble before God. That he may exalt you spiritually. Because all of the natural things that you accumulate when you die, they stay here. And somebody else is going to spend all your money, drive your fine car, live in your pretty house, sleep in your comfortable bed, going to wear your fine clothes. Someone else will. But your soul is going to have to answer to God. What will you do? Are we going to allow the people to control us or are we going to allow God to control us? What are we going to do? Huh? Well, today's church, the people are running things. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. See, this is what I love about God. He loves me, so he, chases, he chastens me. He rebukes me. He loves me that way. He loves you enough to have you come to a preacher who's going to rebuke you, to tell you when you're wrong. Isn't that wonderful? Not going to have a man of God sit around and let you do all kinds of evil things, all kinds of sinful, ungodly, unholy things and just say it's okay? No. But the problem with people is that they don't want to be rebuked. See, they don't want to be told that they're sinning because they want to live the way they want. When a, when a man and a woman, a husband and a wife, Say they're saying 
They have no business not getting along. Husband and wife say they're saved. If we have the same spirit, then why are we fighting? Why would a husband and wife who are filled with the Holy Ghost fight? Divorce. You're saved. You're both saved. The Bible says, do good unto all men, especially unto them who are the household of faith. Isn't that what the word says? Yeah. So how can I do good unto all men, especially to those in the household of faith, but then not do good to my wife? When I'm instructed in this word that I got to be willing to love my wife as Christ loved the church. So how can I, my saved self, not get along with my saved wife? Oh, I know why. Somebody not saved. <laughs> Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. He's knocking at the door. Now, remember in the Gospels, he was the door. But now he's knocking at the door. And if you want to sup with him, he'll sup with you. Contrary to what people say, he's not a bully. If you want to, if you want to get down with Jesus, he'll get down with you. I love, I love that spirit. I love to fool with folks who want to fool with me. Y'all know how it is, folks. I mean, y'all, you know, I just tell it like it is. You know, most don't want to fool with me, but I'm not. That, that's not a complaint. That's an observation. But I love to tell the truth. The truth is real good because I like the devil to know that I know what time it is. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So they want to, a preacher fool with preachers who are whoremongers. But they won't fool with you when you're not a whoremonger. When you preach against sin, they won't fool with you. Now, if you just get up all the time, oh, and then they, they have not preached any word, God is good, ooh, he is in my hands, he's in my field, Lord. Come on, everybody, say amen. Say hallelujah, thank you, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah. Oh, God is good, and and then tell the Bible story. Church goes up. But then people leave and their lifestyles are as filthy as before they came. Because there's been no Bible, God's word, imparted. But the people don't want to hear the word of God. Very few people want to hear the word of God. Most folks want to come to church and be entertained. So when you're a Bible, and I don't mean intellectual church, I mean a Bible living church, not just Bible. See, folks go to church, they, you know, they, you know, they be deep. You see them, especially on TV, you see them, they be have their notebooks and everything. They're deep, they take taking notes and everything, right? Dressed like whores and pimps. Yeah, but all of this, it's not a Bible believing church. A Bible believing church is a church that believes the Bible. And you don't believe it if you don't live it. So the Bible believing church lives what is written in this Bible without objection. That's God's church. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. So it's up to us to hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Now, what the Spirit is saying to the church is get right. Get right. Live holy. Live godly. But poor little preacher like myself, folks are not going to listen to me because I'm not on television with the multi million dollar complex. Y'all understand? Because I don't drive a, ben a Bentley or a Benz for that matter or a Rolls. I don't drive those things you know, because I'm not that. I'm like the money guy. Uh, and so folks gonna they're not they're not gonna listen when you're poor, they don't listen to you. Now I've got Bible, y'all know I won't say it if I can't back it up through the word of God. Now I read all already Proverbs 14 to 20. The poor is hated even of his own neighbor. Uh no, I'm sorry. Proverbs 22, 22 and 16 is what I read. Uh, he that oppresses the poor to increase his riches, and he that giveth to the rich shall surely come to want. So the poor are oppressed in the church. At the, uh, uh, the the benefit of those who are rich, and not just financially but spiritually, so. But then Proverbs fourteen and twenty: the uh, poor is hated, even of his own neighbor. But the rich hath many friends. Poor people hate each other. Yeah. Oh, I don't ain't listen to him. Why? 
His church not big enough. His car is not nice enough. His house not big enough. What's the problem? Oh, he doesn't have enough degrees. <laughs> What's the problem? But because you're poor, they will listen to you. You have athletes, you have musicians, you have uh, entertainers, all these people who are rich, or at least they appear to be, and they have no notoriety, and people listen to everything they say, and they have nothing to say. They can barely articulate a sentence. But because they're a great quarterback, because they're a, 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 a musical artist, gospel, hip-hop, doesn't matter these days, whatever. Oh, they listen to everything they say. Everything they say is always, oh, have you gone crazy? Money doesn't make you smart. So you, you get an ignorant person who gets money, now you have an ignorant person with money. <laughs> and the more money you get, the more ignorant you become because now you have to deal with not only your ignorance, but your arrogance. Because of your money. But people listen to them. They, what do they have? They don't have to tell me. I wouldn't dare allow my child to look at some entertainer as their role model and get their teeth knocked out. Your role model is your mama, your daddy, Amen. and the saints of God. Right. Your role model. Come to church. Your role right. model. Man and woman of God. Not somebody out there doing filthy. Not somebody on TV saying hallelujah with one tongue and, and, and licking the man, another man, another man, licking another man's tongue uh, uh, with the other side of his tongue. No. No. What did it tell you? We listen to anybody and everybody. Because they have money. Proverbs 19 and 4. Wealth maketh many friends. Wealth maketh many friends. But the poor is separated from his neighbor. Isn't that something? Yeah. But he that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit, the capital S, is saying to church. The love of money is the root of all evil. It is the root cause of the of the uh, uh, attributes of this Laodicean church. It is the reason we have so many people in the church today who are in so much trouble because we have allowed ourselves to be dictated to by the people. And so the preacher preaches and teaches what the people want to hear or what he thinks they want to hear as opposed to what God speaks for the for the spiritual healing and benefit of his people. Uh -huh. And so again, and, and, and I promise y'all, the great, the great, great, great bulk of this problem is this doctrine of prosperity. And I go back to the Bible in my closing. Uh, for we brought nothing into this world, and it's certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. So if you will be rich, then you're asking for a temptation. So when, when you're, you're preoccupied in church, everybody's talking about we're going to get we're good. But, but Jesus said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. And what kills me is that people quote the scripture. They will quote Jesus. Jesus said, but seek ye, in Matthew 6, 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then turn right around and seek all of the stuff. They seek the things. Trying to represent the things as being Christ. Instead of obeying the word of God. So that's today's church, the church of the land of the sins. The church that is ruled by the people. But not here. This is God's house. I'm the angel of the house, and my job is to cry out and yeah. there's a voice like a trumpet showing the people their transgressions and their sins. Because the most important thing that takes place in my house is the saving of souls. souls. All right, give God praise.